Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about The Boys Season 3. Finally, I have finally, finally, finally watched The Boys Season 3. Ugh, I would have watched it a whole lot sooner, but I screwed up my Amazon Prime thing. and I'm just like, screw it, man. The dude didn't want to reactivate it. So I'm like, well, screw you. <laughs> so they gave me like a discount. And so I took that <laughs> uh, months later and stuff. And so like, I finally got to watch it. And completely, to be honest with you, I'm a bit disappointed. Like, I still like it. I still think it's really good. But I don't think it's as awesome as the first two seasons. First thing, they had way too many fake out deaths. What in the world is going on in Hollywood where you have all these superhero projects and it's all these fake out deaths? And then when they finally did kill actually somebody, it was kind of like, no, this person just started getting interesting and stuff. Two, all the foul language really wasn't in there this season like yeah they still use foul language and they still cuss but it wasn't as insane as the first two seasons butcher really doesn't do all that much cussing and stuff i'm just like why and they're like oh that's why because of the censorship of all the stinking nudity this season they had to pick one or the other because that's how like hollywood is when you have a certain rating you can't do too much so you gotta like sacrifice one thing uh you're gonna have a lot of dirty words or you're gonna have like a lot of nudity they went with the nudity which is the another reason why this season kind of if me a little bit there was way too much nudity there was way too much man booty on there like what the world man like i am gonna make a video very soon about all this crap i can't take it no more like why why is it well modern day television and all these streaming crap there's nothing but man booty everywhere i'm tired of seeing butt cheeks flapping on screen and and strange because it's kind of like huey i did not need to see huey's butt i did not need to see that much booty and not only that but have you noticed they always put like when they first do it they always put it so close to the camera and then sometimes they do it far away and you want to see what's going on in the scene but you don't want to look <laughs> Because, <laughs> like, my God, the first episode, just the first couple of minutes. Ugh. <laughs> that was just nasty. Like, seriously, that was just nasty. It reminded me of, what was that thing called? Lenny Winks from South Park that went up in Mr. Slave's butt canal <laughs> and everything. That's basically what happened here. <laughs> and it was so grotesque. The man was just, like, tickling it and everything. And I'm just like what the world like that was just too much of it and have you ever noticed because see it has to be like some type of double standard going on because like okay, i know why it's happening it's because women used to get new back in the day in like the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and mostly movies though not television because television was broadcast tv back then and you know a lot of women used to get like topless and stuff but now they reverse the roles and, you know, like, why? Two wrongs don't make a right. If you say it was degrading for women to do it back then, why in the world are you going to do it for men now? That don't make no sense. But I'll get into that in another video. So anyway. And so, like, because I noticed something in the boys in the Hero Gasm episode. They actually show naked women this time because they were having, like, a swingers party and stuff. And I noticed something. In all three seasons of The Boys, there's been tons of male nudity. But finally, in season three, in one episode, there's female, or two episodes, there's female nudity. And I'm just kind of like, it has to be some kind of double standard in Hollywood and stuff. Because why would they wait this long to do that? And, and my whole motto is this. If you're going to have one person get naked in the scene for whatever reason, then the other person needs to be. It's very bizarre when you see a man banging a woman and the man's completely naked and you see his naked parts, but the woman's wearing clothes. <laughs> so, like that makes no sense. So apparently nudity wasn't important for that scene, for the sex scene, if the woman's gonna be wearing a pants and shirt. <laughs> and stuff. 
And so, like, another thing about this is that, okay, it wasn't as funny as the last two seasons. Like, there was humor, but it wasn't that adult slapping your face, like, oh my god humor. It was more like silly humor this season. And I've been noticing something. A lot of TV shows and a lot of movies lately have been very silly with their humor. I blame Marvel for this. I truly do. Because there are four period pieces, and you know how I love period pieces, that are coming out soon. And I plan on watching them. But, as I watch the trailers, I'm just like, why is there so much humor in this? Like, there's about to be one on Queen Catherine from France, and she was a mean, heartless, ruthless woman. So why is there comedy in her show? That don't make no sense. And so another problem, the main problem I had in this season, was just the writing overall. The writing was very sloppy this season. Like, there are a lot of things that happened that you assume was going to happen, but they didn't go necessarily that way. And things kind of, like, leave you flat. A lot, of, There was a lot of character development. I like that. But a lot of the character development was just so out of, like, left field. Like, you wasn't really expecting some of these characters to do that or be this way. And then when they did, you assumed it was going to be something big and grand because this is the boys, and it wasn't. And it's just like they just wanted to be gross in, in this season and everything without having like a real true story to tell you the truth. Because it's kind of like the story that did happen is kind of like, wait, that's it? And he just follows them around and, and, and that's going to happen. And this twist happens, then this twist happens, then that twist happens. And everybody just goes along with it and some people don't. And it's just kind of like... Are you freaking serious? Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. It's not like a terrible season by no means. It just wasn't as good as the first two seasons. So basically this season, a year has passed since season two. And a lot has changed. But Butcher, Kimiko, and Frenchie, they work for the CIA still at the ending of season two. Huey is working for that one um, congress lady starlight is still with the seven but she really doesn't want to be mother's milk his wife when she said she was leaving him in season two oh boy she was not kidding a year has passed and she has remarried now and he takes care of their daughter and everything they have like um split custody and stuff and we get to find out more about his OCD and stuff and why he actually does it. And it's kind of like, you know, the, the storyline I went with this is kind of like they did some of these things just to give him something to do because he really had nothing to do this season. But his story arc was pretty good and everything. And so basically, Homelander is still pissed about last season. But he's at the point where he is literally about to unravel and snap. It's to the point where they can no longer control him and he literally takes over. He alienates his fan base but grows a completely different one. A racist fan base from Stormfront. And so all the intimidation and stuff he does this season. He is basically threatening people to the point where they're petrified of him. And so apparently Butcher and uh, Queen Maeve have been working together and they want him dead. So she learns of a super weapon that can like kill soups and stuff. So she sends Butcher to go find it. He does, but it's not a handheld weapon. It's a person. It is Soldier Boy played by Jensen Ackles. And so I remember this season, there was like a new group of superheroes. I'm all like, oh, wow, I wonder how they're going to fit in and everything. Are they like the new seven? They're payback. And apparently they were back in the old day. He talks to his CIA contact and it turns out that like she used to like, you know, work for them and stuff. But then they got kind of out of hand, especially Soldier Boy. So they had to put him on ice and gave him to Russia. Well, ooh, sorry, I'm tired. I'm yawning. <laughs> sorry, y'all. So, in a way, they go to Russia. They break him out. 
he injures Kimiko so bad that he takes away her power. See, they experimented on him until the point that he literally goes Nova. He nukes the place where he's at. It comes out his chest. The radiation it will knock a suit powers out permanently and stuff. It'll have a, a little bit of it will come back, but it, it pretty much they're powerless and stuff. They want to use this on Homelander. So after that, they can start whooping on him and everything. Queen Maeve tells like Starlight and they all start forming a superhero team only for uh, one of them to portray them. Of course, it's A-Train and stuff. And so the goal is Butcher um, is going to help Soldier Boy get revenge on his former team because they don't want to put him on ice and he doesn't understand why. So they go around killing his former team. But Butcher can't just do it as a human. He wants superpowers. Maze gives him something called Temporary V, which gives you suit powers for like 24 hours. So he starts taking that, but it um, it gives him basically the power of Homelander. Convenient plot armor. <laughs> and so Huey's all like, I want some too, because he has a broken arm and stuff. I'll get into the character developments and stuff later. So Butcher says no, but he does it anyway. This is where we get all the male nudity, mostly from him, because when he teleports, he can't teleport holding on to nothing. And so when he's wearing clothes or and he takes anybody with him, they come out butt naked. <laughs> uh, I swear to God. <laughs> and so, like, at some point in time, we find out more things about, like, you know, Soldier Boy and stuff. Since he used to be kind of like the original Homelander, he doesn't want nobody taking his place. So him and Homelander and Butch, they all fight. And so, but Homelander gets away. And so after that, uh, Soldier Boy starts to be unwilling to control himself. And now they see why he had to be put on ice and stuff. And so basically, when trying to kill one of his former teammates, he tells him that Homelander is actually his son because he donated his sperm and then they made a super soldier because it turns out Edgar wanted to replace Soldier Boy because he was getting a little too crazy. And so they thought Homelander would be that person born in like the 80s and stuff. Black Noir was part of the old payback team and he helped um, send like, you know, Soldier Boy on ice because Soldier Boy went crazy, whooped the crap out of Black Noir and basically smashed his brain in and stuff. And so that's why he is the way he is and doesn't talk because he's so disfigured and stuff. So anyway, Queen Maid gets captured by Homelander and stuff and she's putting like this on um, facility. And at some point, when Soldier Boy finds this out, he wants to talk to his son. So it's kind of like a flipping back. Is he going to betray his son or not? And he does and he does it. And so Starlight finally says she had enough. She exposes Homeland and everything. He lost his fan base. He just wants his son. There's a huge climactic battle towards the end. And now let's get into some character development because that will kind of spoil a bit more. Now, a lot of the character development this season just happened for because they had to have these characters do something this season. And a lot of it just doesn't make any sense, especially from what we know of them and stuff and how they turned their lives around only to revert back. Let's see who I talk about first. Let's talk about Frenchie. Why not? Frenchie is living up with Kimiko and they're just having a blast and everything. Their relationship is stronger than before and they're still working for the CIA. And so they're looking for um, the lady who played Andrea on The Walking Dead. Man, I was excited when I found out she was going to be in this because I ain't seen her since The Walking Dead when she got fired because the showrunner didn't like her and stuff. And she's not even in it that much. And that really bugged me and stuff. Plus, she kept wearing her mask the whole time. I want to see what she looks like now. It's been a couple of years, you know? And so, like, she was Soldier Boy's former girlfriend. And she helped put him on ice and everything. So, they're looking for her, but she escapes. So, in a way, Frenchie's former girlfriend. Remember that girl from the first season? I forget her name, but she had, like, the, the black hair and stuff. And she used to do drugs with him. 
and they used to bang and everything. Well, she went back working for her old like organization and she screwed up big time to the point where the mob lady wants a lot of money from Frenchie and she wants him to start doing some jobs. What are those jobs? Assassinations. So one of them leads him to like Russia, something like that. And so the team is going there to like find the giant weapon type thing. And so basically when Kimiko gets hurt, he doesn't want to help the mob lady out no more. She threatens to kill Kimiko and we get to see a naked Frenchie and stuff. Kimiko powers kind of reactivates for a little bit, but not really. And she realizes, you know, she's going to need her powers back. But anyway, with him, after this happens and she gets injured by Soldier Boy really, really badly, he decides he's just going to start getting high again for no apparent reason. And this was like weird. We know he used to do drugs back in the day, but he changed his life around. And so that's really basically him. And then so Kimiko kind of snaps him out of it. He helps the team in the climactic battle. But that's about it, really. Let me get in Stormfront, because this was kind of shocking. So we thought she died last season. Well, she's on like a ventilation machine and they kept her alive. Missing an arm, missing an eye, and still charcoal and stuff. She's only in two episodes. In the first episode, she's just whacking off Homelander. All by talking about he'll be the new Hitler and everything. And he's like, no, don't say that. <laughs> but she's like, no, why? And then he leaves her and stuff. Then in the second episode, he tells her it's his birthday. Even though he really doesn't have a birthday. Because he was born in a test tube. He starts to act a little crazy. And then for some reason, she commits suicide. Why? Lord if I know. And now she's gone. And it's just kind of like, what was the point of bringing her back? Really, seriously, what was the point of bringing her back? Well, it turns out her fan base is alive and strong, and they are as racist as she is. Kimiko. Kimiko had an interesting story arc this season, and I liked it. It was silly, sure, but I liked it. It gave her some growth and character development because... In the last two seasons, she's just like moody and she's moody, but in a cool kind of way. But she's mostly just always moody, but in a very chill kind of way. So this season, she has more of a personality. She doesn't want to hurt people no more and stuff. And she wants to be more normal. She wants to be more happy. She loves music and she loves dancing. She still does not talk because she has select mutism. She can speak, but she decides not to. And, and at one point in time, we think she's starting to talk because she's singing. But then all of a sudden, it's a musical. What is up with all these musicals? Seriously. Seriously. Joker 2. Seriously. <laughs> so anyway, her and Frenchie have this dance musical number. It's all going on in her head. And it's a cool dance number. They really work their butts off. And you can tell the actress is having a blast in their thing. So much better than she did on the Suicide Squad and stuff. And so, like, she's singing. She's dancing. She's just having a ball. And it's really cool to see her like that. But it's not real. It's just, like, all in her head. She's daydreaming. Now, I remember the actress who plays Sailor Moon in um, Sailor Moon Crystal. She is upset that Kimiko still does not speak in the show. And she feels like she, she doesn't understand why the Asian girl has to be the one who won't speak to nobody and stuff. And, you know, I can nothing to say. <laughs> it's just how her character is, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure it's not like a race thing, and it's, I, I don't know how the comic is, but, um, you know, it's just like, that's just who her character is. She has select mutism, just like Amelia from that Amelia show I talked about. And so at some point she'll get out of it, and she's trying to break out her shell, you know? So anyway, she has to go and kill the Russian dude and everything. And she doesn't want to do that. It causes conflict between her and Butcher. She's all like, you know, I'm not your hired gun. He's all like, that's exactly why um, you're here and stuff. Because remember, he don't like soups. And I always wonder, why did he keep her around? It's because she is super strong and she can help fight other soups and stuff. So it's a really hilarious scene where she's all dolled up, pretending to be a prostitute. And there's a bunch of other prostitutes in the room with the Russian dude. 
and she starts killing all the mob dudes with like dildos and stuff it is hilarious but one of the hookers gets like scared picks up a gun and shoots her point blank in the head but of course she can regenerate really fast like wolverine and deadpool so after that she basically says you know she's done like she's not doing this no more she ain't killing nobody no more she's tired of hurting people and stuff she hates her powers and so when they go and find soldier boy his power just gets unleashed when he freaks out and he nukes her and everything. And when he nukes her, it's really bad. She's not healing as fast as she normally does. So they have to take her back and heal her up. And it's a very, very slow process. After all this, she realizes something. She don't have her powers no more and she's happy. And then so when she gives Frenchie a hug, she tells him, I can feel your muscles. She tells him with her super strength, he just feels like a bendy straw. And that was just so cute in everything when she said that. Well, she said it in her sign language. And cause you know, I did not really think about when you have super strength, what do other people feel like? They feel like little rubber bands and stuff and bendy straw. And so she's happy she finally gets to hug him and when she kisses him and stuff. Um, I think, no, it wasn't his muscle. Maybe it was his lips. It was something. It was, basically, he feels like a bendy straw. But then there's a problem. When the mob people, when Frenchie didn't deliver, they go to kill Kimiko and stuff. And Frenchie. And so she finally is able to bust out. And a little of her strength is still there. But not to the point it used to be. So she asked Starlight for some compound V. And because she says she wants to protect her family and stuff. And, you know, she thinks of the boys as her family. And now she sees that she can use her powers for good and always have to kill, but kill if necessary. So she gives her the compound V in the climactic battle. She puts on her headphones and she does that dance like you're a maniac, maniac. And she's literally doing the dance number while she's going around killing people and stuff. And it's funny and it's cute because it finally gives her personality and stuff. So I'm okay with that silliness, even though it was silly, but I'm okay with it. So Ashley, she's moving on up in the ranks and she's like dressing better. Like I used to hate those suits that she wore in season two. They were loud and ugly, but she's wearing some nice outfits now because she's moving on up. And so we see she's banging some dude and everything. And as he's banging her, her hair falls out. And so she hired a, her an assistant named Ashley too. Basically, it's the same thing she did last season, but she has a higher position. She is kind of like the fixer and stuff. Her and A-Train aren't seeing eye to eye this season. And to the point when she talks to him, it's coming off a little racist and stuff. A-Train is the only one she will get really pissed with and mouth off to. And she gets so pissed that she just lets him have it. Because, like, he's going through something this season. Because this one white superhero goes in a black neighborhood and kills, like, black people and stuff instead of arresting them. And he doesn't like it. And that same superhero crippled his brother. And he wants justice. And she's like, you want justice? How about all the people you killed? I'll get to him later. He gets on my nerves sometimes. And so she just yells at him and everything. She finally stood up for herself. And she lets him know her hair is falling out. Well, she's really rude to like all the other human people, but she's terrified of Homelander. But she won't be rude to no like it's weird. Like I know why she won't be rude to Homelander. But she's not rude to no other soup except for A Train. And then she even tries to talk like some ghetto slang to him that just comes off as corny racist and stuff. And she just really has a problem with him, but none of the like you think she would have a problem with the deep. I mean, because of what happened with Starlight and stuff. And so basically, when Soldier Boy is coming, Homelander is all like, you know, everything's cool now. You know, he's my dad and stuff. And But he's still a coming. And so everybody's just like freaking out. And he's being his smug self. And he tells Ashley, take off your wig. And she's like, what? I'm not wearing a wig. He's all like, don't you lie to me, Ashley. I can see through it and everything. She takes it off and she's 
balding like she's bald with straggly hair because her hair has been falling out because of all the stress well when soldier boy does come and everybody evacuates the other ashley the assistant wants to go with her in her special elevator that's designed for like the ceo type person she's like no nah, that's just for me bye <laughs> i'm just like what like you want to feel sorry for her but then she goes and does all this nasty stuff you know like i don't get it and then when starlight confessed and everything she started spinning talking about uh you know starlight she hangs out with terrorists um and like kimiko and everything and all this other crap and it's kind of like you really want to feel for ashley but it's hard because then she goes and does some butt-headed thing like this hmm who should i talk about next how about queen Maeve? so she kind of doesn't really appear at all in this season she just pops in and then she pops out and so like it turns out she's been working with butcher this whole time to try to find a way to kill homelander and so she gives him temporary v and you know she doesn't care the consequences of this stuff because it's an um well it's a kind of like a prototype drug it's still in its beginning stages they don't really know too much about it it's still running tests and everything and so she gives it to him and then he has suit powers for like 24 hours had to keep reshooting up him and huey and everything well at some point in time when hanging out with like butcher um because he said he didn't find the weapon yet and stuff or something like that those two drink and then they do it and it's just kind of like what now i expect this from her because she's so loose in the goose and everything and she'll just do anybody but remember she's still dating that woman i think i don't know if they're broken up or not i think they broke up no 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 wait highlander threatened them uh highlander highlander um homelander <laughs> i'm thinking highlander that they can only be one <laughs> homelander so like he threatened them and their relationship is kind of like in the air nobody knows what's going on with it and then so she just like does him but for him to do her is super surprising because his wife literally died a year ago and he's always talked about the risk of like you know banging soups and everything and I think he was off his um the, the 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 temporary V and stuff. So that was just completely off the wall and just out of nowhere and stuff. So then she disappears again, only for her to keep mouthing off to Homelander, talking about how she hates him and all this other crap. So he kidnaps her, puts her in the facility, and then at some point in time he tells she asks him why are you keeping me alive and he's all like oh i'm not see like i stole your eggs and everything and we're gonna make a kid and he's all like i'm not keeping you alive i just need you for like you know a certain point in time so then at some point in time they gas her and she's dying but then she gets rescued and stuff and then so in the climactic battle she betrays the team with her butcher and soldier boy to go kill homelander but they escape and then so she fights um homelander and to really i don't know like it was a pretty good fight i wish they would have more action in the show this is a problem that's been bugging me since season one there needs to be action in this show you got superheroes for crying out loud and now you got people on their level willing to fight them and stuff and so it was a pretty okay fight but it could have been way better and so like he gouges out one of her eyes and then so at some point she sees that soldier boy is about to nuke the entire building with everybody in it so she sacrifices herself and pushes him like through the window with herself and they both like go boom and so you assume she's dead but nope it's another fake out death and so she must have like jumped out of the way but still got hit by the blast or she took on the full blast and of course since he nukes people powers away she no longer has powers her and her girlfriend apparently are still together and she tells annie you know like that day we met in the, the restroom in season one she's all like that's the day you saved me and everything it just took her too long to realize it and so with her eye all missing her eye is gone now and so her and her girlfriend just gonna go probably to like another state another country and just live their lives out and she's now fully human and stuff 
And it's kind of like I wish she was in it more and did more, you know? Because she's a really interesting, complex character who's really only been one note for the first two seasons. Let me just get the deep out of the way with his gross behind. So he's still not part of the seven just yet. And so he's still doing his PR stint, which is probably what Ezra Miller is going to be doing very soonly after September. So anyway, <laughs> so he's still doing his PR stint, trying to show he's re um, rehabilitated and everything. And so he's still with his um, pretend fake wife, but she actually cares about him and he actually cares a little about her. And she's really helping him out like with speeches and everything like that. And so at some point in time, because Homelander's co-leader of like the whole vault thing now, he decides he's going to bring the Deep back because he feels he can trust the Deep because the Deep would do anything to get back in, which means he has his loyalty and Homelander doesn't trust nobody at this point. So while he's there, it turns out, and this is completely out of the blue, something that's never happened before in the show, it turns out. He likes to bang his female octopus. Yes, an actual octopus. And he puts it on his you know what and ugh. Like what the, what the world are they going for this season? And they had to put a disclaimer out too, talking about no animals were harmed and blah blah and stuff like that. And then so Homelander wants him to find Soldier Boy. Or no, wants him to find like the twins because Soldier Boy is gonna kill the twins. So he goes to their mansion. Well, they're having hero gasm over there. And he misses hero gasm because like once a year, all the soups and they get a bunch of prostitute people and they just swing. <laughs> when I was in college, I had a fr um, two friends actually. And it turns out they knew each other. I didn't even know that. And one of them invited me to their little swinger thing. I happily declined. <laughs> I am not for that crap. I'm sorry. Like if you are good for you, but I don't want 50 million babies and 50 million STDs and stuff. So anyway, <laughs> um, so he decides, Hey, I'm just going to enjoy myself. So that's what he does and everything. And so at some point in time, his wife, finds out about his octopus because he tells her she's grossed out and disturbed by this and like and so they break up and everything but he's back like i said in the seven and well towards the end when soldier boys are coming to kill homelander and stuff this was the time for them to all turn on him but they don't so Homelander tells him, gives him a mission, and we see him murder a man in the pool. We don't know who this man is yet until we get to the end of the um, episode. And let's bring us to now the next person, Congresswoman Newman, the head popper. I was very disappointed with her entire story arc this season because it's kind of like, where is she going with this? What is her end game? And more importantly, she's a huge threat from season two and they kind of just gloss all over that to where she's barely in the show and she's just about as nice as can be for the most part. So Huey's still working for her and everything, but then there's a man who's been tracking her down. He calls her something different supposedly their best friends well he corners her one day at this point in time Huey sees that he's gonna warn her until those two start using their powers against each other well the man not Huey because Huey don't have him at this point in time so then the man uses his powers on them and apparently they was part of some project called project red flow or something like that I think that's what it's called they don't really go into no detail about it so they might do it in the fourth season because it has been greenlit for a fourth season. And so she pops his hand at first. Then she pops his like whole body and stuff. And Huey sees this and he's like, oh crap, she's the head popper. So she calls somebody in to clean it up. So after this, Huey doesn't really want to go to work. But he just can't like call in absent because it will look too suspicious. So he has Kimiko break his arm. And so he starts like trying to find out as much as he can about her. He goes to her old school, 
finds out that yes indeed she is a soup and the whole school um nurtures like soups and everything and teaches them stuff but she was adopted by edgar yeah so that's his step um, uh, his adoptive daughter and so at some point in time she's just being as cavalier and normal as can be right but then she has a daughter and she tells her daughter i need to protect you and everything for what's coming next so she gives her daughter some compound v and inject it into her now this isn't the green stuff so her daughter must be a soup but her powers probably aren't that strong and the compound v of course makes your power it, it enhancifies it like it did a train in the first season so what the world is going on right so then Edgar is you know him and Homeland are constantly going at it but Edgar's not like afraid of him so then all of a sudden you think they're finally gonna get rid of Homelander but they don't she lies on Edgar and says he's all part of this and he's all part of that and so he gets fired from his job and Homelander takes over and he's pissed because his daughter betrayed him so it's like what is her end game in this right so then all of a sudden she finds out that somebody's been looking into her and she talks to Annie and everything. And so when she talks to Annie, she, you know, she's all like, um, she tells her something and then like, you know, I don't want it to hurt you, blah, 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 stuff like that. And tells her some other stuff. And then she, I think she like threatens Huey or something like that. So then when she leaves, Annie knows starts to bleed. That's the indication your head's going to get popped. So she's letting Annie know, do as I say, or you're screwed and stuff. Then all of a sudden, this don't make no sense. Then she gives like, or Homelander goes to confront her about something and she gives him a note. And then so he goes and finds his son because she knew where he was at this whole time. She was, he was with the military CIA lady. And so like yeah so she completely betrayed so it's like what the world's her end game she claims she wants to clean the world up from soups but she's hoping not one of the most dangerous one there is well he gave her something in return it's what the deep did to that man he killed that man who is that man well he was like another like political person running for like the presidency and stuff now that he's dead pretty much the guy who she's running with is going to be a guaranteed win so she's going to be the vice president of the united states of america and that is her end game and because the president who is about to be president um is just a regular human doesn't matter if he's a human or a super or whatever we now know her end game she wants to be president of the united states all she has to do is pop his head and then she becomes the president and stuff and so because of this butcher's all like oh she has to go because you know there's only a couple of people who know her secret and stuff so it's like where is this gonna go however my problem with her this season is she was a huge mysterious threat from season two and you think she was gonna do all this bad stuff but no she just been working behind the scenes black noir so he had a very interesting story arc this season it gave him a little bit more depth to who or what he is and it was pretty hilarious i have to say even though it was silly it was pretty hilarious but in a cute kind of way it was just kind of like where is this going <laughs> and stuff so like apparently he was part of payback back in like the 80s or whatever and so he was younger back then we get to see the person who plays him finally i already knew he was a black dude because you know you look on imbd and stuff so they changed him from the comic because in the comic he's actually a clone of homelander but in the show he isn't so at some point in time when soldier boy is like you know tracking down his old teammates he finds out takes his tracker out and he splits this breaks the heart of homelander that's like one of his closest friends because he's very loyal and stuff and so we don't know where he's going but he goes to like this like 
I think an abandoned like movie theater. He's camping out there because he's scared of Soldier Boy. He's part of the reason why Soldier Boy was put on ice and given to the Russians. And we find out why through a very odd and interesting way. Black Noir seems to see fictional cartoon characters all around him, kind of like little forest animals and stuff, but in a cartoon Looney Tunes kind of way. And it's weird. <laughs> and we don't know why until we get the flashback. And it's a cartoon flashback. And it's pretty funny, but it's odd at the same time. <laughs> and so apparently Soldier Boy just got like furious one day at him and bashed his head and brains in and, and chopped away a piece of his brain. Black Noir survived that somehow, and that's why he doesn't talk, because he's disfigured um, and unable to talk. His brain is so smushed in and stuff, that's why he kind of sees like these little cartoon characters and can barely, he writes like a big kid and like everything, you know? So he has permanent brain damage and stuff. He's able to figure this and that out and everything like that. And, but it's odd to go down this like juvenile state because in the first two seasons, he is a stone cold killer and a very skilled marksman and stuff. And it's just odd to see him go through like this. And so like he decides to finally go back and confront Homelander and tell him like, you know, I'm sorry, but he, you know, soldier boy is your father. And he already like knew this at the point. And stuff Homelander did because somebody told him because Soldier Boy called and told him. And he's all like, Did you know? And he's like, Yes. Homelander murders him right then and there, ripping out his intestines. And then he shows the team Black Noir's helmet, which scares the piss out of them. And this is not a fake out death. He is actually dead, dead. I'm like, You gotta be kidding me. So you finally kill somebody and you kill like one of the most mysterious people on the entire show. Now his story arc was interesting and stuff and they finally gave some insight into who he used to be. But like, you know, it was just odd because he was so mysterious and a stone cold killer. And then they went down this juvenile route. Annie January. That's the name right there. Any January <laughs> Starlight and everything. So Starlight has been through an interesting journey since season one and everything. Her wanting to be a superhero turns out to be just as fake as all the others. And then her constantly being threatening and stuff and sexually harassed and everything. And like, you know, um, she's been through the journey. Now, one thing that's interesting, she keeps telling the deep like you mouth uh, rape me and everything and I'm just thinking to myself I don't remember seeing that like I don't I remember he pulled his pants off and flashed her and wanted some and then he threatened like her career she didn't and then it cuts from that to like another scene but either it happened off screen or just never happened at all. I don't understand that part and so like you know with this season she is still in the eight, not eight, but the seven. And she don't want to be there, of course, but she has that plain footage of like Homelander and stuff. So he's at bay for a whole year. And then crap starts to hit the fan when her old like boyfriend shows up. I think his name is Supersonic and he's a soup. This makes Huey very, very jealous. I assume this jealousy was going to cause him to have like a huge breakup. That's the way it kept looking, but no, they didn't do that. And so, at some point in time, Maeve comes to her and all like, you know, we got to take him down. I think she comes to her, I think, telling her we got to take Homelander down, this and that, I think. I'm not 100% sure. I can't really remember. If it's not that, then what happened was Homelander went nuts in like the third episode because by the second episode... Oh, was it the second? I'm getting my episodes messed up. Okay, anyway, let me just get to this point. I'm starting to kind of forget now. So, anyway, Annie was made co-captain of the team. This pisses off Homelander. Edgar is all like, he doesn't care if Homelander gets, like, pissed and everything. What's he going to do? I intimidate him too much. Well, Homelander ain't taking this crap no more. After, Star no, after Stormfront killed herself, 
like I said, Homelander went nuts. And so at this point, his career is going to be over until all Hart Rancis, a racist fan base, decides to become his fan base now. And his points are going up. So he's happy and ecstatic. So he makes it to where him and Starlight are in a relationship, like a fake one and everything for the seven. She doesn't like it, but they have to talk about how much they're in love and everything like that. He constantly threatens Huey all the time and all that other stuff. It's getting to the point where she's all like, I'll expose you in that video. He's all like, I don't care. I'll just go to Washington, D.C. and like laser blast everybody. And then I'll go to like, you know, um, the soldiers and all this other stuff. And, and I'll start taking people out who works for like the government. Like he, the leverage they had on him no longer works. And she is petrified now. And she really wants to quit. But Huey tells her, you know, you have to stay working there, I believe. And so like... She tells like supersonic and everything, you know, me and Maeve, yeah, cause Maeve did come to her. So me and Maeve, you know, we're gonna try to take Soldier Boy, not Soldier Boy, but um, Homelander down and everything. And we need like a team of soups to gonna help us once he's like this um, able and everything. So he agrees and everything and he recruits A-Train. A-Train is a snitch and tells Homelander. Homelander that's a great supersonic his body is in like a hundred pieces and stuff and he shows annie this and he's all like look what i just did in there thing and you know don't think i won't do it to you and don't think i won't do it to huey and everything so now she is beyond 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 scared of him and stuff edgar is now gone and she don't know what she'll do so she goes to Huey and she finds out he's been shooting up and everything. They have a huge, huge fight, breakup and everything. Because he tells her, I'm tired of you always saving me. Because Homelander was going to laser blast Huey and then Starlight stopped him and everything. And he says, you know, he doesn't feel like a man. He can't protect himself. And she's always having to protect him. That's why he starts shooting up and everything. She tells him, you don't know what this stuff would do to you. It could kill you. And so they just have a huge breakup. But then they have a huge breakup even more when she finds out him and Butcher are helping Soldier Boy murder ex soups that are like part of um, Soldier Boy's team. So after talking to Mother's Milk and everything, because she has to convince him not to like kill himself by trying to kill Soldier Boy and everything. And then so when Kimiko goes to her, and needs more compound v to get her powers back when she's in the lab she sees the research info on temporary v and basically the reason why huey and butch keep bleeding from their ears is because their brains are turning to mush so she warns butcher and everything he saves huey and then it's the big climatic fight at the end before both her and Huey get naked because he teleports her out the mansion when hero gasm was going on. See, she was trying to save um, everybody in that building, the mansion, right? But Huey teleported her out. They have another huge fight. And of course, we see Huey butt naked, but we don't see her because it's modern day television and it's like a double standard now. And it's kind of like cover his butt cheeks up i'm begging you i'm tired of seeing them so in a way soldier boy goes nuclear and he kills 19 people in the mansion and stuff and other soups have now lost their powers so anyways the huge climactic battle happens she gets tossed around by soldier boy he returns all the lights on and she uses her power to get him one good blast I've never liked her powers. They don't seem like they could hurt a fly. They just seem like they'll stun you for like a couple of seconds. And that's literally it and stuff. And then so her and Huey get back together after the end. And she decides, you know what? She is no longer Starlight. She's only Annie January. And she gets rid of her costume. Which I like her costume, you know? Like I said, because all she ever wanted to be was a superhero and stuff. She finds out Maeve is alive and you know, that's pretty much it. Oh, I completely forgot that Annie actually secretly recorded Homelander as he threatened her, threatened Huey, and talked about how like he kidnapped Maeve and like how he wants her to um, reboot everything that she said and everything. And so she sent the audio out with the video talking about she's done 
telling everybody her secret identity and stuff and how fake vault is and everything like that and so everybody started turning on homeland especially the lgbt uh, community because of Maeve and stuff and so he's like a hated man at this time and it's gonna be extremely hard for them to spin it as she does the best she can but it's still difficult you know so I like how Annie's story has come like full circle from when she first started out wanting to be a superhero, finding out superheroes are fake and everything like that. There's really no point in really talking about Huey because I already talked about him with Newman and Starlight. But basically with him is he's working for Newman, finds out she's a suit. He has Kimiko break his arm. He takes the V and so like every time he teleports, he's butt naked and all we see is butt cheeks and stuff. And so, since I've already really talked about him, let me get to the point where Butcher saves his life. So, Huey and Butcher are ready to kill Homelander. And so, Butcher knows this stuff will turn your brain to mush. But and Huey's all like, did Annie say anything? He's all like, he's like, nah, let's take this dude out and everything. And so, like, but what Butcher does, before Huey can shoot up, he locks him in the restroom in the convenience store. Butcher doesn't want... Huey to die because he looks at him like a little brother and stuff and so like so Huey no longer shoots up after this and since I've already explained it with Starlight there's no point in really going in more detail with Huey. Mother's Milk. He went through quite the emotional journey this season. They really didn't have much for him to do so they had to put in a new subplot for him and stuff which is a callback to the first two seasons and I liked a lot. So basically he has been away from the boys for a whole year. Like I told you before, him and his wife have broken up. She now married a new guy after one year and everything. He's taking care of their daughter. Problem is, she's a huge Homelander fan. And he does not like that. Secretly, he's been looking into Soldier Boy, but we don't know why, into other suits. Butcher comes around, he doesn't really want Butcher there, but they decide to work together. So then, we find out about his OCD and everything. And, and we also find out that Soldier Boy killed his grandfather and I think his cousins or brothers or something like that. How? Well, see, it turns out when he was talking to Annie that the reason why he has his OCD is because one night he was with his grandfather asleep and he wakes his grandfather up because he sees Soldier Boy outside fighting some bad guys. And so, like, Soldier Boy, so he had to check, like, the burners or something like that. So, Soldier Boy threw a car through, like, the place um, his grandfather was living, and it smashed his grandfather, killing him and stuff. And so, he blames himself. He said he put his grandfather in that spot when he woke him up. And he said that's why every night he checks the burners and everything to make sure Soldier Boy doesn't kill his family. He cannot escape this. It's to the point where he is shaken. Well, he is going on a suicide mission. He wants to kill Soldier Boy. But he's not going to be able to do that because he has no powers. He knows that. He refuses to shoot up and he gets pissed at Huey and Butcher for doing that. So, Annie tells him, you know, bullets ain't going to stop Soldier Boy and stuff. But he doesn't care. He just wants revenge. She tries her extreme best to stop him from like trying to like commit suicide by killing this dude. And it works to a point. Then they find out, him and Frenchie find out Soldier Boy's like weakness. It's a gas. That's how the Russians were able to put him under. So they have to make some new gas and everything. And during all this time... He gets really, really pissed because like his anger is starting to come out and in front of his daughter because of course, you no, know, his wife is gone. He wants his wife and he does not like um, his daughter's new stepfather. And so he sees that the stepfather has been buying her lots of Homelander stuff. And he's all like, look, man, Homelander ain't no good guy. And I want you to keep that crap away from my daughter. And so her stepfather is a huge Homelander fan and a little bit of a bigot himself. And so he's all like, you know, what does it matter, man? Like, you know, these bad guys wouldn't get what's coming to them and they wouldn't like do stuff. So this causes like Mother's Milk to punch the dude in front of his daughter and the wife sees this and she runs 
to this her new husband and everything. And I'm just like, woman, what is wrong with you? Because she even tells Mother's Milk, keep going after these soups. You know, they're bad and everything. And she knows Homeland is bad. But she's just a little, she's just as brainwashed as her new husband. So, doing a big climactic battle and everything, um, they're trying to put what's-his-face under. And then he grabs the gas and makes Soldier Boy, like, sniff it and everything. He gets temporarily weakened, but he's able to fight through it. And so then, you know, of course, the whole Maeve and Soldier Boy thing happens. And so after this, it turns out that when Homelander has now become like the, the face of racism and he has fa um, followers and stuff because of it, an anti Homelander throws something at him. He's pissed and he kills that man with his laser blast. The racist people are shocked. They can't believe it. So they don't know what to do. But then here comes mother's milk daughter's like stepfather cheering Homelander on, which causes everybody else to cheer on and stuff. And that's basically his story arc for the season. So I do like how they gave him more depth into his background with that of his wife, his kid. Because we don't really get to see the kid that much. And she's a little bit more older now. About 10 looks like it. And it was even more compelling to see why he has OCD, which was brought up in season two, but they never explain why in their thing. So A-Train. A-Train went through a really interesting arc this season. They try to make you like him, but then they try to remind you that he's a bad person and they try to make you like him again, only to like, you know, like, come on now, keep, like, make up your mind, stop flip-flopping, you know? So a whole year's been going by and his heart isn't as good as it used to be because of the compound V he took back in season one. So he's worried, he's scared and everything. All of a sudden, his, him and his brother reunite. We, we never saw his brother again since season one. I always wondered what happened to him. So he's back. They're doing some youth type stuff, you know, and... He mentions how like that one hero goes around black neighborhoods and just kills a bunch of black like um, criminals and stuff, but he goes overboard with it. And so A-Train goes to Vault and he's all like, I want this guy fired and everything. Like he's going around purposely going into black neighborhoods and murdering people and not bringing them to justice and stuff. And he wants some repercussions and stuff. So they blow it all off and they're like, we'll just have him do an apology. He gives a half-baked apology because he doesn't care, right? So A-Train is all like, I want to change my image and everything. I want to represent my people. I want like an African-inspired costume. Ashley shoots that down. He does it anyway. They're not happy about that. And Homelander keeps making fun of him, talking about you ain't as fast as you used to be. You've been eating too many like burgers and donuts and everything. You're getting fat. Homelander's just like in a pissy mood and stuff. And so A-Train feels like the odd man out and seeing, and so like, you know, he does like, we don't even really get to see him run this season to tell you the truth. They really had to cut back on like money to like, you know, do like, you know, the um, big battle and stuff. And so he's like, you know, he's at an event and he brings I guess like the racist soup or whatever or the racist soup just shows up I know he had to do it for like a PR stamp well of course a train's brother doesn't want him there and everything he's like you know whatever man I have to do this blah 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 stuff like that well some stuff goes crazy the racist soup goes nuts and he tosses like a table or something and it injures and cripples his brother now he really wants revenge but they won't let him get it He's at Herogasm trying to find like the twins and he sees a naked Huey and he tells him, look, man, I ain't into it like that <laughs> stuff. And then so he finds out like Huey has like superpowers and he's a myth about that. And Huey, because uh, like before he met Huey, remember I told you him and Ashley had that huge falling out and it reminded, and she reminded him, you're no hero. You kill people and stuff and you're a druggie. So then Huey's all like, you know, you want like all this like um repercussions for like that racist hero and all this other stuff for hurting your brother and all this other crap but man you still ain't apologized to me for killing my girlfriend and stuff never once have you ever said you were sorry and meant it and then so he finally 
opens up and he apologizes and stuff. He really gave like an apology. So now they try to make us forgive him after all that crap that happened in season one. So then he see, so then Annie warns A Train, like, look, man, I shouldn't even give you the heads up. I'm going to do it anyway. Like, you need to get out of here. Or he finds the racist superhero. And I think uh, they exchange words and he gets so pissed, he grabs him and he finally uses his super speed. He's running thousands of miles throughout the United States, dragging the racist superhero behind, killing him. But then his heart gives out and he collapses. Is he dead? Well, we don't see him for a while. Oh wait, another fake out death. Ashley comes to his hospital, his bedside, and she's all like, your heart gave out, but don't you worry, we gave you a new heart, homie. <laughs> yeah, she's doing her little ghetto slang crap in this, in that part. Ugh. And then she's all like, you know, we gave you the heart of the man you just killed. So now he has the heart of a racist in him. What kind of messed up crap is that? So he's beside himself, but then she's all like, oh, but you didn't kill him. No, it was Soldier Boy when he nuked the place and everything. And you just happened to be there and, and all this other crap. And so basically she's doing her fixer stuff when she's covering everything up. But then she's all like, don't you worry, you're back on the team now and everything. And you gotta start running like never before, homie. <laughs> And so he goes to his brother and he's all like, I'm back, man. Like, I'm back better than ever. I got a new heart and everything. His brother's all like, um, he finds out that A-Train killed the racist dude and he's pissed. He's all like, no, I wanted him behind bars and stuff. Everything I worked for, trying to teach these young kids to stay out of trouble, my kids and everything, you messed all that up. So he basically tells A-Train just to get out and never come back and stuff. And that's basically his story arc and stuff. So Soldier Boy, the man himself, that everybody keeps talking about. Um, basically, yeah, he was like, you know, a uh, soup. He was like the ultimate soup, one of the most powerful ones. He fought in World War II, I think it was. Or he fought in something battle. And because of that, he has PTSD. But then we find out from his sponsor, played by Paul Reiser, I didn't even know that was him. <laughs> Until I saw like the pictures and stuff, I'm like, what? <laughs> so anyway, turns out he didn't even fight in the war and everything. He showed up after two days after the war was already fought and won and everything. And so like, uh, yeah, so he's a big fake. And you know, so I don't know where his PTSD comes from, but he has it. But he never fought in the war. So anyway, he was the ultimate superhero till he turned on Black Noir. And so because of that, they realized he was too dangerous. Edgar decided, you know what, we're just going to use his sperm. We're going to create um, Homelander and we need to get rid of him. So the CIA lady and everybody else, they sold him to Russia after they put him on ice and everything. And so he's been there. They experimented on him. They gave him like new powers and stuff. He's able to nuke people and take away their powers. And so when he wakes up he nukes kimiko he somehow makes it from russia to america don't know how they don't explain it it's kind of like batman oh no it's kind of like the dark knight rises where bruce wayne just gets back to gotham somehow so then he nukes a building by mistake and everything and then he goes hunting for his team and he starts killing them one by one with the help of huey and butcher they think they're going to be able to control him and everything. But it's kind of like, why would he even... So this is the thing. I get why Butcher's doing this. But what makes him think he can trust Soldier Boy? Not to mention how dangerous Soldier Boy is. Like, what he's going to do to get rid of Soldier Boy after Homelander is dead. Not to mention... Um... If Soldier Boy is such, like, all about himself, why would he team himself with, like, Huey and Butcher? Well, in a way, as, he, as he's killing on one by one and everything, Butcher and Soldier Boy team up to fight Homelander at Hero Gasm. Homelander escapes, and then they go tracking down more of the team. Butcher gets taken under by somebody who can put nightmares in your head, and so him and Huey, they go and look for the dude. But then he doesn't like Huey all that much. 
because he was too soft and stuff. And so, for the most part, Soldier Boy doesn't seem like to be like that bad of a person, other than some of the bad stuff he did. But then, so like Huey betrays him, so this pisses him off. But he still joins them, nevertheless. When he finds the uh, mind control dude, he tells him about Homelander. So now he knows he has a son, and he tells Homelander, you know, if I was around and everything. I would have happily given you my spot as like the main superhero because one of the reasons why he teamed up with Butcher and them so he can take out his own team but he was going to help Butcher by killing Homelander because he doesn't want his spot taken and stuff. So then you think okay is he going to betray Butcher and them or is he not? He tells Butcher yo that's my son and Butcher's all like so what it was just your sperm and all this other crap but let's like get the job done. So it's kind of wishy-washy as to if he's going to turn or not. So then when he does confront Homelander, Homelander's excited because Homelander just wants a father. But then Soldier Boy tells him, you know, you're ridiculous, man. You wear a cape and everything. You're somewhat like a tension whore and everything. I would have raised you better. So then they fight. So it's like he's not on his team. But then everybody turns on him. So then everybody's fighting themselves. So it's Butcher, it's Homelander. They have to team up to take on Soldier Boy now. <laughs> and so, like, ah, uh, so yeah, like I told you the whole Maeve thing, and he's put back on ice and everything, and that's that. And it was interesting to see him a man at a time because, you know, he doesn't know what nothing modern is. He doesn't understand why men are holding hands. He doesn't understand like technology and stuff he's still into like older women and it's just like he's this extremely dangerous threat that's just loose and i always wonder how was butcher ever gonna control him you know so that was just the weird writing this season butcher he surprised the crap out of me this season i was not expecting what he did like a lot of stuff he did i know he kills soups that's his thing but it was very 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 shocking like for him to take temporary v because he hates soups his whole mission in life is to stop soups from being created to kill as many of them as he can and now he became the very thing he hates the most now that makes for some good storytelling right there so as shocked as I am by that, I'm glad they wrote that because it's like he can never judge them again. You know what I'm saying? He has now become his own worst enemy and stuff. And not only that, but because of like convenient writing, he has all of Homelander's powers. And so now they're on par with each other. I assume this was going to be a huge epic blowout fight between those two but the fight was minimum and it was a good it was a good fight but it should have been better than that i don't understand why they shy away from action so much in this show yeah the story itself is compelling enough that it can uh, carry the whole show but it'll be nice to see some action and stuff and this is the problem with tv shows they always had that tv show budget and what was even more shocking, like I said, when him and Maeve did it, it's kind of like, dude, don't you even care about your dead wife who's only been dead for a year? And it's just like, you know, why would he, that, that, that just completely ruins it, you know? So yeah, I already said the whole, he freed Soldier Boy, they're working together, all this and that. And so him and Mother's Milk, they have a huge falling out because Mother's Milk does not want him shooting up and he doesn't want him taking out soups that ain't did nothing to him and stuff. And, you know, he's basically just like killing the payback team and stuff. And so like, I've already explained everything with him, but when it comes to him and Ryan, he's actually being a good stepfather to him and stuff until the point where he starts shooting up and he starts neglecting him. This hurts Ryan's feelings. But when it comes to him and Huey, we find out why he is the way he is with him and stuff. And we get more context as to what his father did and stuff from that, uh, what was it? Season one, I think. So anyways, they're looking for one of the payback members. He has the ability to place nightmares in your head and stuff like that. 
and he gets Butcher. So we get to see all the traumatic stuff on when Butcher was a kid. Butcher and his brother would get beat severely by their father. When his father would go after his little brother, the little brother would hide and Butcher would take the blunt of the force. And so he would always protect his brother. Then when Butcher went to private school of all things, he would get into fights with kids at school. And they were like, well, I'm sorry, you know, I'm gonna have to tell your parents. And he doesn't want that because, you know, his father gonna beat the snot of him. So he turns the tables and he beats up the principal and stuff. This shows his dad that he's tough. So his dad takes him to a bar and gives him a drink. And so like, but he still wants to get out of that family. So when it's time for him to go like to college or whatever, he leaves and he tells his brother, you know, I have to leave. And his brother like, no, you need to come stay and protect me. He's all like, no, like I, I can't take it no more. I'm, I'm leaving and stuff. I'll come back one day. It takes a long time for him to come back. And when he finally does come back, his brother commits suicide and everything. And so like, um, I don't know, actually that was probably the dream he looked at. It. Yeah, 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 I think it was his younger self. But then when he kept looking at his little brother, it reminds him of Huey. Like Huey just looks like him with the curly hair and all this other crap. So this is why he so, like he treats Huey like an older brother, but also like just like another like hired gun and everything and disposable one at that. So in season one and season two, you really don't get that brotherly love because like he just treats them like a hired gun and a disposable one. But in this season, they want to give him more emotional depth. So they did the whole subplot with the backstory of like his little brother. So when Huey wants to shoot up for one final time to take on Homelander, he doesn't let Huey and stuff. Because he cares about Huey and he doesn't want Huey to die. He also gets pissed when Huey shoots up for the first time because he doesn't want to see Huey get hurt. Well, at some point in time during the climactic battle, Ryan turns on all of them and goes for Homelander. And so now Butcher has a new target in mind, Congresswoman Newman. So I do like this extra layer of emotional depth they gave him. Um, but it doesn't really fit with that as season one and season two because you see how he treats Huey and stuff. But it was nice to kind of like give him some warmth, you know what I'm saying? Because he's such a cold-hearted person and it's weird because he used to have a fuzzy side to him at one point. Now we get into Homelander. Basically, I already talked about him a lot with everybody else, but yeah, he is unraveling. Like, he is just going nuts in the head. Stormfront dying would really sent him over the edge. He feels like, screw it. He's just going to start taking over now. And then when the, um, the racist people start to be his fan base and they make his points go up, he's all excited again. So he's sticking with Vault and like the um, Seven and everything like that. But now Starlight is starting to be a problem for him and he's sick and tired of Edgar. So like I said, he works with Newman to take... Um, Edgar down and him and Starfront, no Starlight, they start to have like um problems and everything. He constantly is threatening people. He is th um he is literally killing like you know other people that get in his way. Like he just doesn't care no more. And we see that it still upsets him that he was born in a test tube. He doesn't have a father until it's revealed that. Soldier Boy is his, like, you know, his father. But before he finds that out, he is terrified of Soldier Boy. Like, the one person in life he is actually terrified of. And we see some gross things where he's, like, milking a cow and drinking his milk. Like, he's just, he's still into that nasty, gross stuff. Like, that baby thing he does, you know. But one thing he wants is his son. And he really just wants him. So, when he finds his son... He tells him, you know, man, look, look, man, you know, we can be a family and everything. And I forgive you. And like, you know, I found your grandfather and everything like that. So he tries to convince Soldier Boy, but Soldier Boy is disappointed in him. So in the huge climactic battle and everything, Ryan, of all people, betrays the boys. And it's like... It's always the kid, man. It, that's what happened in The Strain. The young boy betrayed humanity and stuff. So him and Ryan, they fly off and everything. Then he goes to his racist rally and he shows everybody his son. 
and his son has like a smirk on his face his son is now evil and this is like how did this happen so it's kind of like after all these years of his son having a good life with his mom a secret life and everything a sheltered life but a good life nevertheless he just turns evil out the blue and i'm just kind of like we all know what's gonna happen at some point he's gonna turn on his father in the future and then be with butcher and stuff or will he or will he be the new big bad he is i believe the first soup to ever be born um of like a human in a soup you know so so now when it comes to that the seven and vault like who are they gonna have to make like the seven they still have a train they still have the deep i don't know about highlander um homelander anymore because like you know he's doing his thing with his son and will he actually come back and so it's kind of like this organization is like crumbling big time it was a roller coaster of a ride this season, a gross one at that. It had some really good moments though, but I still feel like the writing was very weak this season. And it just wasn't as good as the first two seasons. But nevertheless, I can't wait to season four. I just hope they tone down the gross nastiness of it all. Alrighty, well I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.